Following a new round of taxation involving trade routes in the Outer Rim, the Trade Federation, an interstellar trade organization, carried out an invasion of the independent world of Naboo. This invasion was ultimately successful, resulting in the occupation of the entirety of the planet by the security forces of the Trade Federation. After being forced off her world by the Trade Federation invasion, Padme Amidala, Queen of Naboo, appeared before the Galactic Senate to plead her case to the Galactic community. However, the response in the Galactic community was rather muted, with the Senate calling for a hearing and an investigation to investigate the legality of the Trade Federation occupation. Unsatisfied with this result, Queen Amidala prepared to return to the planet of Naboo to mount her own resistance effort in an attempt to shoo the Trade Federation invasion force away from her planet. After landing in the swamps outside of the capital city of Theed and rendezvousing with the leaders of the Gungans, one of the many sentient species that call Naboo home, a plan was devised to carry out a resistance operation in an attempt to force the Trade Federation to capitulate. This battle would take place in three separate areas. A diversionary battle, which would draw Trade Federation military forces out of the city and into the fields in between the swamps and the urban centers. A ground battle, which would be carried out by a small infiltration team in an effort to infiltrate the hangar for the Royal Naboo Starfighter Corps. And finally, a battle in space with the intention of destroying the Trade Federation droid control ship. The first element of this battle would be the assembly of a large Gungan army, which formed in the swamps and made their way out into the open to meet a massing Trade Federation force. The Gungans set themselves up on a large grassy plain under the cover of a large shield dome. It's around this time that a row of Trade Federation armored vehicles arrived on the battlefield. This row of armored vehicles included a number of MMTs, which served as the main infantry transports, supported by a number of armored assault tanks, which formed the main force of armor in this engagement. The MMTs held back at the top of the hill, while the AATs advanced slightly and then opened fire on the shields, hoping to be able to break the shields without having to send forces through them. Meanwhile, the small infiltration force made their way into the capital city of Theed and started approaching the Royal Naboo Palace, home to the Starfighter Hangar for the Royal Naboo Starfighter Corps. After a small battle in the streets outside, designed to function as a much smaller diversion, the Starfighter pilots were able to be delivered to the waiting N1 Starfighters, where they were able to dispatch from there and make their way into orbit. Meanwhile, back in the fields outside of Theed, the Trade Federation forces had called off their bombardment of the shields, being unable to breach the shield generator, and begin deploying a massive formation of OOM series battle droids. These battle droids formed simple infantry squares and began marching forwards towards the shield generator. As they passed through the shield generator, they were then able to open fire on the Gungan formations. It is around this time that the Gungan formations would be able to return fire with what are essentially hand grenades. While these explosives were able to take out swaths of battle droids in single hits, they were less accurate than the blasters used by the battle droids, and the battle droids simply had a numeric advantage. At this time, up in orbit, the starfighters of the Royal Naboo Starfighter Corps were approaching the droid control ship, when they were met with swarms of vulture droids being controlled from the droid control ship in an attempt to stop the assault. As a result, a massive dogfight ensued, surrounding the large Lucre Hulk class droid control ship, a dogfight that was slowly tipping in favor of the Trade Federation. While this was going on, the ground battle continued to rage in the fields outside of Theed, as the droid forces were able to eventually destroy the shield generators, causing the shields protecting the Gungan formations to drop. Instead of carrying out a bombardment, which would damage their own troops, which were now engaged in close combat with the Gungan defenders, Trade Federation commanders instead ordered the AATs to advance into the fray, where they could use closer range weapons against the Gungan forces. This resulted in the armored forces of the Trade Federation advancing down the hill towards the ongoing engagement. With the arrival of Trade Federation armor to the engagement, as well as the significant numbers advantage the Trade Federation held in this battle, they quickly began overwhelming the now confused and scattered Gungan defenders. Seeing the approaching AATs, many of the Gungans opted to flee, attempting to make their way back into the swamps. Meanwhile, the advancing battle droids did everything they could to subdue, capture, or kill the remaining Gungans. Up in orbit, the dogfight continued while a single N1 starfighter began to pilot its way into the large Lucrehole class droid control ship, flying through the ship's hangars and eventually arriving at its primary reactor systems. A single torpedo fired by this lone starfighter 
fighter to these reactor systems would sway the course of the entire engagement. The destruction of the reactor systems on board the Lucreholt class battleship would ultimately result in the destruction of this droid control ship. With the droid control ship destroyed, the control systems for all of the B-1 battle droids operating in the Naboo area was essentially gone. Without any control, the battle droids simply slumped over lifeless. And with the shutdown of the battle droids, the battle simply stopped everywhere it was raging, with the droids fighting in the fields outside of Theed simply slumping over, essentially dead. With the droids of the Trade Federation now deactivated, and Newt Gunroy, Viceroy of the Trade Federation, now in custody, the battle was over and the occupation of Naboo had been thwarted. The Naboo crisis itself had a lot of larger effects on the galaxy, but this battle in particular led to Anakin Skywalker's induction into the Jedi Order. It led to the end of the Trade Federation occupation of Naboo, an action that would be hailed by the people of Naboo as a great triumph for their world. It cast doubt onto whether or not the Republic could trust the corporate forces that were operating in the Outer Rim, and it ultimately bred some content between the large corporations and the Republic itself. Content that would ultimately lead to an event known as the Separatist Crisis, the event that led to the Clone Wars, and if you'd like to learn more about that, I'll leave a link in the upper right-hand corner to a video I have all about that. And if you have any other battles you'd like to see covered in future episodes of Battle Analysis and added to the archive, you can leave those down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.